was the year after I won um, 70.3 Worlds in Maludovar in 16. I was in such like a negative headspace and just kind of felt like I had everything to prove and um, just kind of crumbled. I just like was totally checked out and I pulled out of the race. I was really looking forward to coming back here just to kind of have a different experience. I realized like what I thought was everybody else's pressure that was all coming from me. Now I go into the races like looking for my own performance and it's like as simple as swim, bike and run as fast as you can and everything else is just noise. To be honest, it would surprise me to win here. I had a bit of a crash a week ago today. For me, it's just gonna be like just dealing with adversity, like it's gonna hurt. DNF is not an option. I feel like Ironman and 70.3 racing is all about dealing with adversity and like nothing always goes your way. And like there's so many times during a race that you wanna quit, but um, everything in me is just gonna be like getting to the finish line and being gritty. Um, with this down river swim, how is that going to influence the way you race this race? Down river swim means it probably that the gap between like the slow swimmers and the, I say slow, <laughs> but the slower <laughs> swimmers and the fast swimmers isn't going to be as big. But then there's still the likes of Flora Duffy, who's, you know, a phenomenal swimmer. So, you know, I'm not going to really think about anything else than, you know, swimming the best I can and trying to be as close to Flora as I can. I don't really plan my race plan off of other people. The beauty of non-drafting racing is kind of that you're racing your own race. You're not just changing your race plan based off who you're racing. Who are you most excited to race this weekend? Um, I guess Flora, because I've never raced her in a 70.3. So, and like, she obviously hasn't raced many 70.3s, so like, she's kind of an unknown, but like, she's so strong that I think she's gonna be the one to beat. Hey, I'm Trevor Foley, and we're out at some random public track in Chatty, and got a like a tempo workout today. Got like two by three miles at like tempo threshold effort, just making sure the gears are turning over. Yeah, I ran uh, track and cross country at the University of Florida for three years, but just decided at the end of three years to really give triathlon like a full go if I wanted to try to be, you know, one of the best in the world. So I just kind of decided to go all in. Yeah, I actually don't think it's that humid. I thought it was dry. Um, I thought it was a dry heat, so I don't think it's that bad. Um, probably works better for me on race day if it is a little hotter. Might even the gap a little bit to some of these big names, so we'll see. Speaking of big names, I mean, you're kind of coming in as a underdog, maybe under the radar? Yeah, probably, if you want to call it that. I, uh, you know, obviously I look up to all these people I'm going to be racing against. I think I can get on the podium if everything folds my way but obviously you know that's hard to say i'm gonna give it my best shot and we'll see it's gonna have to bike and run my legs off and i, just, I think i'll just be behind from the get-go so it's just gonna be a matter of playing catch up it'll just be kind of like trying to hunt them down would you say your run's the strongest i'm starting to figure out my bike's pretty good too um so i don't know i probably like that bike run combo try to focus on having like the fastest like on land time of the day like a, a fast bike run combo and i think if i do that, it'll be pretty competitive. I don't know where that's gonna leave me at the end of the day, but hopefully high enough. So it'll be interesting to see how I stack up against everybody across like Swim Bike Run to see what I need to kind of work on or what, what's strong, what's weak. And uh, yeah, just to kind of see how I can compete against some of these big guys. All right, Tamara, tell us what, what do we got going on this morning. I was trying to change my tire on my uh, uh, disc wheel, which is part of a longer process of trying to get this bike set up properly. We might not be able to fix the bike issue quickly, and I brought all of my run stuff. So now we're just switching the order of my run and bike workouts today. Do you see, see yourself having a chance to win this race? I... Uh... I'm always trying. <laughs> it's a tough field and uh, I think I'm going to get to race Paula Finley for the first time, which will be kind of cool. And I definitely think that I have a good shot of doing very well and that's what I'm aiming for. Do you see Paula as your uh, biggest competition here? She's certainly like big, big competition, but I, I think it's, I've been wanting to race her for a while. You know, she's another Canadian and um, I think, I think it'll be cool to hopefully finally get to be on a start line together.
Tamara is someone, she is so like understated. She hasn't been in the sport full on until like probably this year. She, you know, now she's gonna be all in. Now what's gonna happen? It's gonna be like Taylor Nib 2.0. Did you prep for the humidity? <laughs> Actually, it's been really cold at home. So a bit of a, we had a couple of warm days that for maybe some heat adaption, but this is the most hot and humid I've been in for a while. How's it going team? Looking good! Yeah, I've raced in Chattanooga. I think this will be my fourth time. I was on the podium for the full. So I love this course. I love the town, love the environment. The community is the best part. They just love having the race here and love racing in Chattanooga. I'll come back anytime I can. Yeah, so this weekend we're excited to host uh, the 6th uh, 70.3 Chattanooga here in, in beautiful downtown Chattanooga, we're at Ross's Landing. I'm um, looking forward to hosting one heck of a field in this beautiful city. So we came here with Ironman, a full distance event, uh, seven years ago. Uh, shortly after that, we added the 70.3, and then it wasn't long after that, we decided we were gonna bring 70.3 World Championships here. So we have a pretty cool history here in Chattanooga in a short period of time. Last year we went to a, a new swim course. It is a little longer, it's 1.4 miles, which is certainly unique. Um, but it's a downriver swim, so it's, uh, it's straight downriver, keep the buoys close to you, and, and let it go. With an event this size, you have to have an incredible staff, you know, and, and I think it's, it's fun because it's a family, right? So our, our crew, we travel together, a lot of us have been doing this for 15 years together, but it's fun. You don't do this and work these hours if you don't have a good time. You know, at the end of the day, our goal is to put on an amazing experience for our athletes, but we're fortunate that we get to have a good time doing it. Appreciate it. Thank you for all your hard work. Thank you for your, all your hard work on Sunday. Make sure if you don't This have is our captain's thing. meeting. It's for the, the captains to meet all the staff that they're gonna be working with, so make sure they get any last minute information, any last minute changes to their job. The, the captains um, typically come from nonprofit groups or school groups because Ironman Foundation also gives out grant money, but it is the, the captain's job to coordinate their group of volunteers. So depending on the job area, we have anywhere from about five volunteers that we need to about 200 volunteers. So we ask them to coordinate all those volunteers. We definitely could not put on these races without volunteers. Obviously we have Ironman all over the country. Staff can only do so much. Um, and so staff coordinates with volunteers and they're here to just make sure athletes have the best day possible. Obviously the athletes have been training for a very long time. And you know, it's great to have everybody from the community involved as well for volunteers. So not like we're taking over the town they actually get to be involved in the race as well this is a monster event so we could potentially see five to seven hundred more athletes here than we've ever seen and we've always had a sold out 70.3 years so it'll be a big event for the for the city it'll be a big event for the athletes uh, the, the atmosphere out there should be pretty electric